What is up, everybody? Hello, Mr. Streamer. Hope Hi, you lost. have a great day. Dude, um, I'm gonna try uh, my best. Yesterday, it was raining most of the day. I think it stopped around like 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock-ish. It sort of looks bad today, but I hope it isn't. What I a day for an Alex stream. Oh my god, Dane does keep, thank you so much, man. I appreciate the 95 bits, dude. Because I gotta go pick up stuff from the post office, but it looks like it's nice outside. I don't know. It's hard to tell today. I don't think it's gonna rain. It didn't call for rain. But then I also would like to go to the store because I would like to pick up a utility cart. Um, because I kind of don't like having all my Happy tools Sunday, on my desk. Happy Sunday, Alex. Verm, thank you so much for the prime. Happy Sunday to you too, dude. So is that actually a Sunday? No, it's like an overcast day that happens to fall on Sunday. Lame Penguin, what's going on? Tiger, how you doing? Logo, Dingus Keebs, hi, Bubble. Uh, D-Man, how you doing, man? Uh, I'm doing great, bro. How about you? Uh, Juan, how you doing? Lost, Logo. How you, how you guys all doing? G-Off, how you doing, man? Kopi, good afternoon, Mr. Alex. Hope you had a good morning. I did work. I was trying to, I was hoping that I'd get all the switches I want done for the June keyboard today. Gonna be honest, I am not 100% happy with the switches I chose. I don't think it's gonna make a good pairing. So I think I'm just gonna switch switches. So I'm gonna be doing it tomorrow. I think uh, the, the, the June, cause I really wanna build it. I think I'm just gonna do it tomorrow. Um, so hopefully that doesn't bother anyone who is looking forward to the build. I have to say the Hex 4B you did for me is holding up and I really wish I had a second one. The Hex 4B is a good fucking keyboard. Straight up, dude. Aspen, thank you so much for the Five tier one, man. Months. Oh my Have a God. wonderful stream. Lots thank you, dude. Love. I really appreciate for it, all man. The chill times. Dude, I, I appreciate you, dude. I think, um, like I said, guys, uh, I, I know we did a subathon. I'm gonna do something completely different. All the subathon keyboards are packed. Every last one of them now. Every single one. All of them should be shipping out in the next like week. But I think sometime in August, I will be doing like a mini Bubbly giveaway for something. A tier one sub to NCF oh underscore 3535. Thank you so much, bro. I appreciate that. I think we'll do some more giveaway stuff. Um, I just want to do it for you guys. Maybe, maybe we'll give away like the cycle seven or something like that. I don't know what we'll do. Uh, NCF, thank you so much for the it's been our, a while for since being I here, bro. Your I Gerald, thank you so much for the tier one. NCF, how are you doing though? First time here, how are you, how are you, bro? Alex, is it more worth to get a choice sixty five or cycle seven? Um, if you were to spend the extra twenty bucks plus whatever shipping is in the cycle seven, I think you'll have a better experience of the keyboards. Just me being honest, I think it's a, a better experience. What's up, Chozo? Hi guys, my hair is a disaster. I need to get another haircut already. Look, look how fast it's all grown. It's grown so quick already. And plus I have headphone hair a little bit. Oh well. How you guys all doing today? Did you ever get a chance to get that personal day in massage? No, I've, you know what? I never did. That was a long time ago actually that we were talking about getting like a personal day in massage. No, I never did. It's been really busy, like extremely busy. Dude, I uh, really need a haircut already. How is this possible? I swear, you know what I hate too? All the haircut, haircut places around me have gone up to like 50 bucks for a haircut, even for guys. So I just don't want to get one done. This is why I wait so long in between haircuts. I know some people who get them done like every month. And for me, it's like every four months, dude. The cooler you are, the faster your hair grows. Maybe true. Oh my God, Skull Kings. Well, you're handsome. Uh, wow, you're handsome. Dude, thank you so much, Skull King. What on earth emote is that? That is so funny. Bro, thank you so much, Skull King. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you, dude. Our haircuts here are $3? I wish, man. Um, I'd be going up in price. Really? I'll give you a personal massage anytime. What the? Huh? What the heck are we talking about right now? Not doing great. I need to replace my whole front brake on my car as it got stuck and superheated. That's, dude, car repairs are kind of nasty, huh? They're kind of like, they're kind of wild. That's an offer? It is. Like, it's pretty crazy. Also, I'm really loving this board, by the way. I've been using the Suse the last uh, 24 hours. Really liking it. I noticed that my Firefly keycaps I've used them a long, I've had them for a long time and I'm starting to see there's some shine to them. I don't know if you guys can kind of see it right there. 
a little bit of shine on like the left side of the keyboard from playing games on this particular set. Starting to get there, but it's okay. Honestly, I'm okay with the shine being there. Uh, I just changed the lens. Do you guys like the new Let's go zoomed handsome. in more effect here? I just thought that the old one was just too far back. And I'm gonna be honest, I didn't like that my screen was in the shot. Um, because every time my screen was in the shot, like I'd have to like hide chats and stuff. Zach, thank you so much for the tier one, man. Um, hi Alex, first time watching you live right now. I've been watching your YouTube, both channels for a while now. Hey man, thanks for being here. I appreciate the support and just hanging out and chilling here. It's a little low. Do you guys want it to be higher? I can change that tomorrow. I'm not gonna do it right now, but I can I can do that for you guys tomorrow. We can make it a little higher. Um, have you tried B-Sun switches? Yes, I have tried them. I have not tried Akashi switches though. That is something I have not tried. I think this angle is good to be honest. The only reason I chose this angle is because I like the way the light on the keycaps look. Any higher, and then the keyboard didn't have that like kind of seam effect to it. So, did I get an F1v2? I did not. I did not. Is there a possibility you can upgrade, update your website for key beginners? Also, first time watcher live too. It's 1 a.m. here. Ooh, okay. That's a good little point there. So, I've actually been working on an article and working on other stuff for beginners. Um, I've been working on a how to get started in keyboards, um, which I think is turning, I've already written an article for a, another company with the exact same thing, but I felt that the stuff that they were asking was just way too much information. So I'm writing, a, I'm rewriting an article and adding more to it uh, about how to get started in the keyboard hobby, as well as like, things to look out for and like where to buy things and stuff like that. So it's gonna be a mix of uh, a mix of things, which I hope ends up doing well. This is the Suse. I've been really enjoying it. I see the Subathon winners have all been shipped. Um, haven't been shipped, they've all been packed, but they will be shipped over the next like few days. Did anyone receive their Envoy tomorrow caps at 6U space bars instead of 6.25? Really? Oh, definitely message them about that. Kush, thank you so much for the, guys, thank you guys so much for all the subs. I don't know what's going on today, but I appreciate you guys. Honestly, love this. The people I've spoken to who are new to the hobby are so lost and it's a lot to explain. Yeah, so how done am I at that article? Let me let me tell you guys exactly how far I am into that article. Also, this music is like kind of trippy this morning. Hold on. Let me turn it down a little bit. Um, Hold on, let me go to my Google Docs and find out. Let me tell you guys how far I am to the article. The hard part is writing it. The more fun part is actually getting to design the web page. I am at, so basically here's my like concept on how I'm doing this all. I'm, I'm writing down all the information I need and then I'm summarizing it into like sentences. And so far I'm on um, how keyboard mounting styles differ. And then what I'm doing for every section of the article is I'm doing something called my recommendation. So in case someone is still really lost and just kind of wants someone to say like, point me in the right direction, I'm doing a my recommendation section. So for example, um, what I wrote down for the, the mounting styles, if you're new and you're still overwhelmed, go for a gasket mount. It's the middle ground for typing feel and sound and typically very pleasant to type on. So that's kind of what I'm doing and I'm trying to su sum it all into like w one or two sentences. Uh, please drop subtle means in the guide the chat will get. Ah, for you guys I will, for you guys I will do. One year Pagu. Holy sleepy. Thank you so much, dude. I feel like the key, uh, the key hobby goes from zero to a hundred hella quick. It does. Um, I think the most difficult part about the keyboard hobby sometimes is keeping up with everything. Like truly, that's the most tricky part. There's not much to understand the how to build a keyboard, right? The basics are, like when you think about it, here are the basics, right? I have everything written down. The basics are understanding what a PCB is, which is simple, a plate, stabilizers, switches, and keycaps. Did your keyboard change? I switched it before I started streaming, yeah, Chozo. I, I forgot to change it. It's the Suse with uh, Cherry MX Blacks and GMK Firefly. 
Uh, do you plan on taking a look at the new Point .65 at all? Mm, I haven't heard of that one there, so the answer right now is I don't know, uh, but I'll take a look. And I think uh, just direct people towards yours, beginner guys, and just Hi, get it out. Yeah, I'm hoping to get it over the next nice week. Stream. Oh my god, Kursat, thank you so much for the four months of being here, bro. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate the subs. Also, there, I thought there was a small problem with the build today. So this is the PCB we're going to be using. Um, the client sent two PCBs in, and I noticed right away when I opened up this particular PCB, there were things missing on it. Luckily, this PCB is still all intact. It's been desoldered before, but I tested it and all made sure. Unfortunately, there was about, I don't know what this is. This is some sort of diode of some sort. This was off. This completely fell off. I resoldered it and attached it on. There is also about four other diodes that I had to resolder on. I have no idea why they fell off, but they fell off. And unfortunately, I can't do anything about this, but there is two whole diodes just completely missing. So these are missing diodes and they are not working. So unfortunately, I can't use the brand new PCB, which sucks. However, I'm gonna see I'm not gonna build it with this one here because I don't like the fact that I've had to solder on so many diodes, but I'm gonna see if I have any spare diodes that I can just solder on and maybe get this client a working PC, a secondary PCB. But for now, we'll just use this PCB. A little unfortunate, but I mean, sometimes this kind of stuff happens. I'm, I'm assuming some of them got knocked off in shipping, but uh, it is what it is. The Time 80 is a really old board, yeah. That's another thing I was thinking too. It's it's a bit older. I just got the Levi, uh, the Leviton, uh, Leviathan GB and I wonder if the plateless build needs a supportive plate. I don't think so. I think you just go plateless. That board there was really nice for plateless. I took my Tomo to the office and all my coworkers wanted to get into the hobby and I wanted to somehow make, make them and get them like a Zoom or a Tofu. It is explaining to people like how to get into the hobby is tough. I'm new to the community, didn't know that keyboards are a long-term investment considering five months wait time for a group buy. Back, I mean, st still to this day, there are group buys that last like, I swear to God, two years. It is crazy how long some of the group buys last. Also, this is the most weird plate I've ever seen for a keyboard, by the way. Like, the, what's the point of this? I have no way idea. To make friends. It is, dude, it's such a nice way. Like. I don't know what the people designing the time were thinking doing this, but might as well just made a whole plate. <laughs> I don't get it. Um, but yeah, it's uh, the client told me half plate. So I opened it up expecting an actual half plate. And I was like, oh, it's just two halves of a plate. <laughs> I don't get it, man. Wisp, thank you so much for the prime, man. GG. Dude, GG for real, man. Three months, I appreciate you, dude. Also, I don't know if the client's in chat right now. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be using this thick silicone. I think this is gonna kill the sound of the board completely, especially because we're using inks. My worry is we're gonna use this. And this is aluminum, not brass. Uh, we're gonna use this paired with this. Inks are already not the loudest switch in the world. I just think it's gonna completely dull down the sound of the keyboard and make this a really boring typing exp typing sound. This is top mount. I would have loved to see, I don't know if the, the time came with a polycarbonate plate, but I'm gonna see if I have any small O-rings lying around. And then maybe we can uh, kind of pseudo sandwich or burger mount this, whatever it's called. Thanks for the follows guys, appreciate you. Love you guys so, so much. But uh, the keyboard's kind of cool. I have um, never seen a Time 80 in person, only via pictures and at a meetup. Well, actually, at a, a, from afar at a meetup, so I technically have. It's an interesting board. Like, it's so interesting. It's cool, like, it genuinely is, it is, Super neat, dude. My headphone keeps falling off. So, I, I, I low key though, I don't recall. And again, it's been a while. This is a bit of an older board at this point. 
Was there ever a working version of this? Like, did they ever have like an actual clock in the bottom? That would be super neat. If they had made like a, a variation of this with an actual working clock. But uh, it genuinely is like a really fun piece to look at. If you guys want to take another closer look there. Kind of cool. Levy, thank you so much for two months. I appreciate you being here and thank you so much for the support. Really do. Very, very interesting looking board. Visually, I know this is not really a review. We're doing a client build and this board's no longer available. Standard stack or not stack, uh, wedge with a little bit of kind of like a stack on it. You get some of the accents peeking through, which I think is kind of fun. It's not quite, <clears throat> A super boring, like usually with keyboards, if it's super flat on the bottom, I'm a little bit turned off, especially for higher price points. But because this has so many embellishments, I think this is cool. The front has some accent to it. Very, very cool. Uh, finally get to see a build stream. Hey, what's going on Milo? How you doing, man? Uh, if I had Civ G off, oh, that, that would be perfect for this board. Absolutely perfect. So very cool, very, very cool. It is a top mount. I think the screws are all in there already, so perfect. And then I believe there's a little LED on the top over here. Uh, I just display it with the back showing. Honestly, same. A polycarbonate version of this would be awesome. If you want to review it for a bit, I'm fine. I've been sitting on my desk for, oh, there's Tide, okay. Tide, I don't know if you caught what happened with one of your PCBs. Were you here for that? Uh, sad you don't have civilizations. I know I keep meaning to buy Civ, but I don't. I'm thinking, you know what might also look really nice on this? Sloth. I'm kind of like vibing with Sloth a lot lately. Or we just go something super basic. I was not? Okay. You're one of your PCBs, the one that's already been desoldered once, completely A-OK. -okay. Your other PCB, I was already kind of going over it. Um, I, I don't know if you... you you bought this second hand or something. Um, but uh, it came with about, they came with this diode knocked off. I've resoldered everything that I could. This daughter, this, uh, this daughter board, this uh, diode was knocked off completely. I resoldered. There was about four other diodes in the package that were knocked off. I resoldered them. But there is missing diodes completely on the brand new PCB. Like you can see there's nothing here. So... What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to see if I have any spare PCBs lying around the house uh, that use the same diodes and try to repair this for you. At least get you a second PCB that's working. But uh, I don't know. Sometimes it doesn't always work according to plan. But at least we got everything else soldered back on. So it looks like either it got knocked off in transit or that maybe it just came like that because it's been sitting so long. Also, did you want the silicone in here, Tide? Evil diodes? Yeah, they're kind of a pain to resolder too, especially those really small ones. I don't know if you want the silicone. I personally don't think it's going to sound the best with silicone, but it's all up to you at the, the, end, of the, the end of the day. So nice. Happy seven months, Alex. Young, Alex, love. appreciate you, bro. No silicone, I'm thinking. I'm thinking the same thing, Tide. Thank you, Young. I appreciate you, man. Um... I'm gonna get around to building Platelist soonish. Platelist is genuinely really, really nice. I really like this. I genuinely wish this was an actual functioning clock though. This is kind of cool. Like the more I look at it, the more I'm like, that's, that's kind of neat, man. You don't see many boards like this anymore. You really don't. That's cool. Imagine though, if it was, they should really revisit that idea. They, they should really revisit this board just for that. Just to see how that would work. Imagine how much machining that, uh, that weight took. Yeah, cause like, I don't even know if these are all different. I mean, like, honestly, I don't know. Oh, okay, they're all separate pieces. Each one of these cog wheels is a separate piece that's screwed in. Interesting, very, very interesting. I know what's on the bottom. I know, guys. It is what it is, though. Like, what are, what are we supposed to do? Can't do anything about it. It's still cool, though. 
The fact that it's on the board is still really neat. Uh, anyone else get a Freya 65 so excited? I have my Freya 65. I was actually considering using it today. Uh, I like the glass keyboards, they're fun. I miss the bottom weight thing, it's crazy looking. It's super neat. Um, I did my plate this build yesterday with the Arc 60 and Zaku's. It's 11 out of 10. I think I'm done with hot swap for now. Oh, I can't even open this. The Arc, okay, I need my scissors. I'm struggling right now. The Arc is such an amazing board. It kind of, um, I don't know, I sort of feel like this, but I also don't know if it's true. Did the Arc kind of fly under the radar a little bit? Like just ever so slightly? I feel like it only got popular afterwards and it didn't really take off immediately in terms of popularity. Voxel, how you doing, man? Finally caught a stream. What's going on, dude? Dude, there's a lot of new faces here today. Hi, everybody. Uh, but what do you prefer of these keeps? Uh, Mode Envoy Tofu 65, QK 65, or Jairus? Here's the order of which I would probably purchase them. Mode Envoy at the top, I would probably pick the QK over the Tofu, uh, the Tofu 65 2.0, and then the Jairus at the bottom. I think the Jairus can sound better than the Tofu 65. Um, I just don't like the way the Jairus looks as much. And maybe that's just me, I get, that's like my personal bias there. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my order of things. They're all good keyboards at the end of the day. Like I think you'll you'll be able to get away with um, <clears throat> a great sound profile on all of them. But uh, you know, actually, I'm gonna get some more lube too because I think I'm running out. I did so much cleaning today, guys. Like my room was it wasn't a disaster, but like I'm definitely noticing that with smaller spaces, you really have a lot of upkeep especially if you're working from home. So I, I really did a lot of like reorganizing today. Um, and even last night, I was just like watching a movie, reorganizing things up until like 3 a.m. in the morning. I just really wanted to make sure my room was like good. You know what it is too? When you have a functioning workspace, like a, a cleaner workspace, it doesn't have to be 100%. I do find productivity definitely goes way up. And I find the moment my room gets like overbearingly kind of cluttered, not even messy, just feels cluttered. I just feel like lethargic at work. So kind of happy that we did that. Debating picked up a cloud line or duality or both. Do you have a preference? Visually, uh, I think the cloud line is very pr pretty and I kind of prefer it a little bit over the duality and both can have a nice typing experience in, in sound. I think the duality is a little bit more flexible for what I prefer in sound. Um, but, you know, that's also my opinion too. The Andromeda Tenkai was talking about will be my commission. Oh, wait, so you're sending it to Alpha and then Alpha sending it to me? Mm -mm. Uh, cluttered makes me so demotivated. That's like one of my biggest things. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but the moment I feel too cluttered, I just start to shut. I also start to shut down. That's actually a big flaw of mine too. I, I feel very like shut down. I don't want to work anymore. And the moment I feel like I'm just like too encapsulated, like enclosed with everything, it just feels bad. So. It was a great day for my household yesterday. I got to watch my son crawl for the first time. Then I took a W on an F1 V2 in stock last night on cloud nine. Wait, that's a really good Saturday. Congratulations. Also, I'm super happy about your son. That's awesome, dude. How, uh, how proud are you right now? Does the machining or does the mechanism of the weight uh, separatable? Yes, you can separate those. Actually, it'd be really cool if you end up painting those. But it, look, it does look like it's capable of all separating. I don't think I'm gonna separate it today, to be honest, guys. I don't wanna take this apart. I like the way it is. But I'm assuming you can even move the clock hands. Like if you didn't like that time for whatever reason. Nope, I tried, did not get one. I was too slow. 
I, uh, I was out last night for a bit and then I got home and then I just remembered about the F1 and I'm like, oh, it's not there anymore. So I didn't, uh, I didn't get one. Want to ask you a question? Does alu plate give the popping sound? Nope. So what gives you that poppy sound is a variety of things, mounting style, the switches you choose, um, even the keyboard acoustics can give you that different poppy sound too. But my typical go-to if you want like this, which I think the Suse is sort of the poppy sound. I don't know, maybe correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's like. What you're gonna look for, number one for the space bar is no mounting points under the space bar. That's number one. Uh, then typically you're gonna want something that, like for example, I think if you just want tried and true, like if you want like a simple way to kind of get that sound, top mount, polycarbonate or something plastic, uh, and then use something like a cherry switch or I don't know, even a gator on like ink. Uh, that's how you're gonna get that sound. And then if you want it in like a gasket config, probably FR4 or aluminum. Again, it depends on the keyboard too. Uh, I was refreshing at midnight, still wasn't fast enough, kind of unfortunate, but there is gonna be more drops. Yeah, I, I think eventually I'll get it. That's on my list to get right now. And then also I really, really wanna pick up the um, Quantum. I really liked that board. Have you built the CW88? Is it on par with the F1? Um, no, I think the F1 is a little bit nicer to be honest. Uh, but the CW is nice. Like I didn't have any problems with it. I think the F1 definitely has a little bit more of like a premium sort of feel to it. I'm looping and filming switches for the first time, even before having my first keyboard. Not gonna lie, this is incredibly tedious, but the process becomes fun while watching these streams. Uh, so thank you for that, Careless. If I'm not watching a stream while I'm looping switches, I'm watching a movie. And if I if I don't watch anything, I can't loop. Like I can't mod switches anymore. The process of the uh, looping switches, like it's super tedious. Um, I need to be distracted while I'm doing it or else I feel like it's such a chore. Have I tried tub looping? Yes. If I can, A, hey, listen. If I could beg you guys to not do one thing in this hobby, it's tub lube your switch stems. Like, I know there are people who are all for it and will tell you that like, that's the way bro, like you tub lube. Don't tub lube your switches. You can tub lube your springs. Do not do your stems. It is such a waste of your time. You're gonna redo them all. And they're all gonna be very inconsistent. Just don't do it. That's like my one thing that I will tell you to. Spray lube, don't do, don't do spray lubing either. Just grab a brush, put aside a few hours. Do not tub lube. I can tell you guys without, without saying too much, I've had people come to me to redo entire boards that have been tub lubed, all right? Um, that they've done themselves. Uh, and they just go, I, this was a mistake. So I have to usually desolder everything and then completely like use a brush and then it, that takes longer to do. Just don't do it. It is so bad. Just speaking the truth. Oh, <laughs> How did you lube the Obscuras? Uh, spring and step only? Spring and step only. I have a whole lubing guide on YouTube for how I do my uh, switches. And I do that exactly. Just those words together. It, I know the word tub lube does sound weird. Can the lube be cleaned with ultrasonic cleaner? Yes, you can. Tub slash bag lubes, my springs. Springs is fine, you can do springs. Springs with an oil is completely a-okay. Even that though, guys, like, I think I did it the other day for springs, but um, even springs lately, I've been just like manually lubing with 205G0. <clears throat> that is the lazy way. Tub lubing is, uh, you're only gonna be sad if you tub lube. Just, guys, I, there's, I just, you know what it is? I don't even wanna say, I hate saying this, just trust me, but just trust me. Like, I, I hate it because I feel like I always need to explain myself, but 
sometimes it, the word inconsistent doesn't mean much to people. People don't care. But yeah, just trust me on that one. Trust me, bro. Uh, just trust me, yeah. Bag lubes uh, with GPL 105 is the wave. Yeah, you can do springs with one G, uh, GPL 105. That's what I do. Uh, just make sure what kind of material the switch is first. If you use ultrasonic cleaner with IPA, I don't care. I'm gonna be honest, guys. I don't use ultrasonic cleaners. I have a, a little solution, which I think I'm completely out of now anyways, that in really bad cases of switches, I'll use a solution that I got from key.no, which is now called something else. Um, nowadays, I just kind of lube right on top. If it's really bad, like if you got lube into places you shouldn't have got, which sounds dirty, I know, then I kind of just like, I don't even bother cleaning. Cause don't, even with the solution, they never get 100% I find. Maybe that's just the way I clean them, but. Hey man, I've been looking everywhere for mystery switches, uh, like NK mystery switches that I can get for cheap because shipping in the UK. I don't know who else does mystery ship switches. I think it's just novel keys. As far as I know, it's just NK. What stabs are these? They're C3, I believe. C3 stabs tend to need a little bit more lube, I find anyways, but we'll see. They're not bad. I would say like out of all the stabs, they're at least they're like a little bit more consistent. Wow, Ooh, Firefly like, looking you know. so hot on the suey say wow. Dude, wow, dude, thank you so much, Raddy. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, dude. Oh uh, yeah, dude, it's, it's definitely wow. Can confirm they need a little bit more love, but overall not bad. Yeah, at least they're consistent. Like, you know what to expect out of C3s. <clears throat> but I haven't really had any like big issues with them. Love that wow. It's the best. Like whenever you guys do TTS wow, it is so funny. Owen Wilson wow, it, it definitely sounds like that. It just sounds sarcastic too. Like you don't care, you know? In your experience, do regular MX Blacks sound similar to Hyperglides? Okay. I I think it's better to ask everybody this. Do you guys think regular MX Blacks sound similar to Hyperglides? I personally do not think so. I think Hyperglides are so much thinner sounding, but some people say they do. I, I, I don't think so though. I'm like on that side of the fence where I think it's a lie. Hyperglides feel better, but doesn't sound as good. I can kind of agree with that. They do feel good. They just don't sound good to me. Um, my way is to grab a, a cotton and use tweezers to, oh yeah, you can use cotton and tweezers too. <clears throat> I don't even remember what OG blacks sound like anymore. Do you just use hyperglides? Some people swear by hyperglides though, man. I am not in that boat. I do not like hyperglides. Also, I got tricked. I thought the first episode of that Daryl Dixon spinoff of Walking Dead came out, but it was like a five minute teaser. So I watched it and I made popcorn for myself thinking it was the whole episode. And after five minutes, I was like a few handfuls in the popcorn deep and I got baited. It was just a, t a trailer, but I'm super excited for it now. Now that I know it comes out in September. For some reason, I'm a, I'm a big Walking Dead fan. I don't know why, but I handpicked uh, Vint Blacks for the, some of my boards like my Jane V2. Yeah, if you can, if you have the opportunity to hand pick those, you get some good results. Very, very nice results. <clears throat> also, Ty, did we want? Is this wind keyless? Oh, never mind. We have to use seven. Never mind. Never mind me asking. We have to use seven. U. Does anyone really need to lube? Wait, do you, you really no vent blacks need to be modded. Vint blacks also need to be spring swapped. If you're not spring swapping vent blacks, then um, I'm not gonna say it's gonna be bad, but it's gonna be a very awful spring experience. Cause a lot of the older springs in those vent blacks, they just, they're very inconsistent and just not good IMO. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I have nothing good to say about the springs in those older cherry switches. Even in some of the newer cherry switches, they're still very bad. <clears throat> I find that they sound the same. Maybe used vintage has a louder upstroke, but you really have to look for it. That's good to know too. I don't know why I have this disdain for the hyperglides. I just do. 
Mino keys has mystery switches. Oh, do they? I didn't know that. Okay, we're good. I swear I once had three types of springs in one vent black. Dude, I've also had that same experience. I, I got a batch of vent blacks from a friend and when he sent them over, there was like, um, long brown springs that looks like they had rusted. And then there was long silver springs and then there was short gold springs. And he said it was from one batch that he desoldered. And I, I did not, I thought he was lying to me. Like, I'm like, dude, this is, there's no way this came from one batch, but I've definitely had that same experience. <clears throat> I totally agree. If you can find Vint Blacks, then Nixie is a better choice. I think Nixies are great. I think out of all the cherry switches, I love Nixies. Uh, Ultra Reds sound really thin if it's not paired correctly. That's kind of the experience I've been having. Have you built a keyboard using the Envoy case? I built the on in the Envoy case, I think a total of five or six times now, Wolf. Um, I think the majority of them are on YouTube. So if you want to, you can just search like my Alex Otos mode Envoy if you really want to look up my stuff. And I should have everything there if you want to watch some stuff that I've done. Uh, I really wish there was a spring tester pack for sale. Can I, uh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop a personal preference on springs right now, okay? You guys don't have to take my word for it. Getting close right now. Okay. The only thing truly to me that matters about springs, I was really into springs at one point. Like I was buying the Sprit Slow Springs. I was buying like these triple stage ones. It's either long or short. That's it. And obviously the weight. Buy from a good brand or buy long or short. Don't, I don't know, man. Listen, everyone might have a different experience. The slow springs, those, you know, like not so fast. I don't know what they are anymore. Like there's so many different springs. I never noticed a difference. I think I tricked myself into noticing a different one time. And I, it's just, I, to this day, like, I really don't know, man. I think a lot of it's like, it's too small to notice any of that difference. Um, so either get yourself the small ones or the long ones. The long ones tend to be a bit more quick. They're a bit more snappy. Well, the small ones aren't. Um, I've heard good things about double staged. I personally still don't notice a big difference with double staged stuff, but that's just the only thing that truly matters other than the weight that you buy and the brand. That's it. I think there must be some placebo effect in getting new springs for sure. Yeah. But there are some people who swear by it, right? And I don't want to take away from their experiences at all. I just personally think it's sort of like audio and I've already been down this rabbit hole multiple times with different hobbies. Like you just kind of give into it and you're just like, oh yeah, yeah. Like that's, that's the change. Like, yeah, there's a bit more like of a high note here type thing. If you just get good quality springs, you'll be in a good spot. I'm a tactile gang. I believe the multi-stage spring does make the SW snappier, but it bounces back. I mean, yeah, honestly, it could be that too. You could get a bit more of a snappy feeling from it. Uh, double Dutch spring jump. Yeah, kinda. Like there obviously is science behind some of it. The people post those graphs and all that. And you know, there, there obviously has to be some truth to it, but I don't think there's an actual noticeable difference while you're typing. Beats me. Guys, what am I doing with my day today? I did so much work this morning. Like I woke up early and honestly, it's a Sunday and I got to start treating weekends. Like I don't have to, but like I want to start treating weekends like they're days off. I do want to go to the post office quick, but I don't know what I'm doing today. Maybe just chill. You should get a nice burger for dinner. I haven't had a nice burger in a while. You know what? You're on to something. Uh, did a Japanese lesson? Ooh, I want to start learning a different language. I'm kind of nervous. I tried once. I didn't do so well. I did not do so hot. I noticed a little bit louder top out sound from double stage springs. So it might be a bit more of that bounce back for sure. 
Maybe that's true. You, maybe you do get some of that. I got a slow roast pork belly in the oven for dinner, four hours down, one to go. Oh, baby. Oh, that might be fun too. Maybe I can convince my girlfriend, maybe we can go out to get some barbecue or something. That might be fun. I don't know what we're gonna do today. Ordered the F1 V2 this morning, let's go. Congratulations on that. I just got done making a burger for my lunch today. What'd you put on it? What's your go-to toppings? Alex BBQ stream? Dude, if I actually had a barbecue, they don't allow barbecues here in the condo, which I guess makes sense, like I, I guess. But um, if I had one, man, I legit would, would actually set up a camera. Cause I, I love, like, not that I do it very often, seldom, seldomly never nowadays, but I love barbecuing. Um, just barbecue, uh, burger sauce and cheese, nothing fancy. Hey, that's the way to go, bro. Are stock cream soda springs all right? I think they're fine. I do think that sp uh, cream sodas need to be a little bit re-lubed, um, but I think they're okay. I think you're in a good spot when you're using those things. Smoky flavored stabilizers, yum. I like a fried egg on top of my burger. You know, I've never tried that. I've had the opportunity to, but I've never tried it. Or maybe I have and I don't remember. I'm pretty positive I've never tried it though. Now I need my screwdriver. Uh, BBQ, I live five hours from Mem uh, away from Memphis. You're making me want to take a day trip. Hey, dude, if you're not doing anything today and you want to have yourself a little day trip, Aspen, bro, take yourself a little day trip. You deserve one, man. Uh, you should give it a go. It's fantastic. So do you just fry the egg? Like, in, do, do you season the egg at all or do you just fry it? How do you even know which keycap is for which? Oh, I honestly, profiles... Other than that, you don't, you're not really supposed to know which one's supposed to go where. Just the profile is supposed to go with the right profile. That's it. Oh, I need a bit for this. I've also finally convinced my girlfriend to get monitor arms to help free up some of her desk space. So we need to go figure out a nice dual monitor arm for her monitors. A raw slice of onion, pickles, and lettuce. Those are must-need toppings for burgers. I'm impartial to lettuce on burgers. Most of the time, the lettuce they give you is like not good, I'm gonna be honest. A lot of the times it's just very like, it feels like old stale lettuce at like mid burger joints, you know? Hope stream is going well, Alex. Hey, crap, Just thanks, built man. my mode envoy with golden cap V2 Ooh. switches, and I'm enjoying the keyboard very much. I would love to try those switches. I love Gatoron cap V2s. I have not put them in an envoy yet. Low key crap, I hate doing this. I don't know if you have like the capabilities to do it. Could I like, can you like record a little something, maybe even on your phone? I would love to hear that. I think uh, cap switches are such underutilized switches in this hobby. Golden caps on my sequence. Yeah, golden, dude, golden cap switches are, like I said, I feel like they're underrated. Share with the chat, please. Yeah, share with the class. Um, it's an illusion for a burger to look healthier. Oh, huh. I mean, I think there is some health benefits to probably putting a little bit of lettuce on, but I just not a lettuce guy on burgers. Caps are also cheap, yes. I love lettuce on my burger, but I've noticed that it's very stale indeed. So I don't actually want to order it on my burgers anymore. Yeah, I don't like, I don't mind lettuce on stuff like as like a, an accessory to a burger, if you want to call it that. But my favorite toppings are onions. Onions are so good on burgers. Um, if I had to put lots of toppings, it'd be onions. Uh, green peppers, believe it or not, but not a lot of places offer green peppers. I think it gives the burger a nice crunch, plus I like green peppers. Uh, mushrooms, cheese, and bacon. That's all I would put. I think that, for me, makes like a really good burger. But the definite two top, the definite three toppings would be cheese, bacon, and grilled onions. 
those would be it. And if you're feeling adventurous and want some extra sweetness, no cookie butter on a burger? Cookie butter? Wait, on a burger? Does it actually work? Could you do that? Does that taste good? I've never heard of that before. Bless you. Chat, can we get some bless you bless yous from your girlfriend? Uh, next, you are gonna tell us you put strawberries in a burger. I've seen crazy stuff like that, man. I'm an onion demon, so much so in fact that they grab some Wuche onion switches. Dude, okay, you know what? Okay, I, I, I do this all the time at Subway. When I do get a Subway order, you know what I always get? This is my go-to, steak and cheese. Because I'm gonna be honest, the deli's hit and miss there. So it's steak and cheese, um, toast it, and then what I'll get is onions, so red onions I believe they have, green peppers, spinach. Then they have the, um, <clears throat> the crunchy onions, so I'll put that on top too. And then my topping of choice is sweet onion teriyaki. Or I think it's, is it, or not teriyaki, it's a sweet onion sauce or something. The more onions on it, the better, man. Oh, it's so good. Sweet onion sauce, yes. That is their best sauce. Although, I'm not gonna lie, Subway kind of fucking expensive these days, man. They don't have caramelized onions there, I don't think. I don't think so. Subway is kind of really expensive. I I'm like getting a little... The few times we go, I'm always noticing our order gets like... I'm like, man, I could just go somewhere else. Life expensive these days? I always, I always remember growing up though, that Subway was supposed to be like the not cheap, but like not crazy expensive place to go. Cause it's just a sub. But now I feel like it's a whole like, dude, if you get a cookie and a drink now, uh, ever since Jared left, I mean, I can have two KFC deals for the price of a foot up. Yeah, man. Although I'm gonna be honest, of all the fried chicken places, KFC, the my least favorite. There is no reason to go to KFC unless you want uh, popcorn chicken from them. That's that's about it. It's also Jolly. I, I feel like Jolly Bees taste exactly the same. I know I'm gonna piss people off with saying that, but Jolly Bees and KFC basically are the same fucking chicken to me. Now Canadian KFC is not good. Every time I have KFC, my stomach hurts. I mean, mind you, it's been, what, years since I had KFC. Korean fried chicken, totally different experience, though. Korean fried chicken's insane. I had Jollibee's once, tasted exactly the same as KFC. I didn't get the stomach ache, mind you, but it wasn't really for me. Subway's crazy expensive. I always get them for me and my GF and a drink, and it was around 25 euros. Yeah, it's about $34 here when you get, like, a, a cookie and a drink for two people. And I think it's, I think it's not even getting two footlongs. Bon Mi is good too, but Bon Mi also is getting expensive here. <laughs> I think it's, I think everything's getting expensive. Everything's getting expensive. It's all too pricey nowadays. Uh, Popeyes is okay. Honestly, I've been kind of off the fried chicken train lately. Like if I'm getting fried chicken, I'm getting Korean fried chicken. I, I think I've just grown tired of like, Popeyes is, to me, it's becoming also hit and miss. Their fries are good, yeah. The hype over Popeyes never made sense. You know why it makes sense? It's because it's so much better than KFC. So when you're comparing the two, it just makes sense. All right, let's put this really odd plate in. I still don't understand the point of this. Why they divvied this into two pieces? It really doesn't make any sense. It's so confusing why they did this, actually. Weird. Uh, Chick-fil-A has been missed lately. I've never had it. I think they have it here in Canada, but I've never had Chick-fil-A. All right, we're using some Gatorade inks. 
I think there's a fun story to be had here. The client said that they had not lubed these or not touched these in about three years, but they had lubed and filmed them. And you know what? I'm gonna give it to Tide. I don't know if Tide's still in chat. Tide did a pretty good job on lubing and filming these, even if it was two or three years ago. I did go through them all just to make sure everything was good. And I didn't really find many problems other than maybe like one or two that had to be, like it was a handful that needed to be opened up and then maybe had some lube reapplied, but pretty solid job. Uh, one time I went to the USA, I was nine, I'm 26 and I still crave Wendy's. I feel like Wendy's, if you haven't had Wendy's in what, 17 years, Wendy's has changed. I used to love Wendy's. Now I'm impartial to it. Like now it's like, whatever. I feel like it definitely has changed. I feel like out of all the burger joints though, like if you go to a fast food place, it's still really good. But um, my choice, if I had to go to a fast food place in Canada is Harvey's, not Hardee's, Harvey's. That's my go-to burger place. I, I don't know why. I've always had like a, a they, they taste really good. And then if I had to pick something else, honestly, I kind of like Five Guys. Harvey's only exist in Home Depot. No, they don't. there's actually more than, more than that now. Five Guys is my other go-to place. I mean, I like Burger King, but I, I know Burger King is not, not the people's burger anymore, man. I just, it has like a special nostalgic place in my heart. That's it. This plate is so strange. Five Guys is solid, but so damn expensive. Yep, it is. It is expensive. They have other fast food places, like another really good place. I don't know if you guys have this in the States. It's called South Street Burger. They're really good too. I would say In-N-Out. I've never had them. Um, I am not sure if these are V1s or V2s. I'm pretty positive they're V2s because with V1s, it's very noticeable that like ticking experience that you kind of get with them. But okay, I'm actually gonna grab a keycap set and we're gonna test all of our stabs here. Um, does anyone have any recommendations for my build? It's a GMK 67 with stock King whites, GMK clones and stock stabs lube with dielectric grease. I mean, if you already have KTT switches inside them and you want to try something different, try long pull switches, maybe cream sodas, maybe Obscuras. Maybe that could be a little bit of a, a different experience overall. Um, I don't know what I want to use today for keycaps. Would you guys be down if I use Dandy? Or is Dandy not okay for this? Dandy might be kind of cute. What else could I use? Yeah, I think Dandy would be cute. Sounds like a Dandy idea. Yeah, I'm down to do a little bit of a Dandy board. take uh, some other keycaps off of my other board with, that had Dandy on it, but Dandy's always hot. Redacted's on something right now and I don't want to take it off. And I just want to take, I want to, I wanted to use Sloth today. I'm not going to lie, but Sloth is also on the cycle and I want to take a few more pictures of it with the cycle. So I don't want to like have to take it off now and then put it back on later. How about the set we don't speak about? We don't speak about that set. I don't think Greg would look at on this though. I mean, maybe it's just basic, but. Okay, we're not looking for tuning right now. We're just looking to make sure everything actuates okay. Where's my thing I just had? It. I mean, Greg. KTC chalk on half plate gummy O-rings sounds like you're bumping chalks. Uh, I just think KTT switches are amazing. 
like truly there's such there's such good switches and good value too which i think is also equally as important Looking good. Everything's actuating. Get canceled for saying Jollibee's is comparable to KFC. How do you guys feel about Jollibee's? How do you guys feel about it? This is such a divisive topic. It's this is such a dangerous topic to talk about. Because I know people go hard with their Jollibee's. I just pursed Wingstop. I think Wingstop doesn't. It's not, I wouldn't say it's comparable directly to Jollibee's. Wingstop, hella good though, bro. I, I am a, I'm a Wingstop believer. Also, Ty, do you want step caps or regular caps lock? Uh, my favorite fast food fried chicken. Really? I mean, that's fair. Everyone has their preferences. Wingstop is mid? Oh, man. Maybe we just don't have a lot of great wing places here. Regular caps lock? Sounds good. Uh, the sweet spaghetti surprised me. I've never had their spaghetti. I'm not going to lie, man. I'm too nervous to try their spaghetti. I've had very good spaghetti over my the course of my life. So, plus I'm honestly kind of burned out on spaghetti. Like, very rarely am I in the mood for it. Uh, here in Mexico, Wingstop is bad. I mean, it could be regional. Here in Canada, it's actually like... Oh, Lemon pepper is so good. Okay, this particular one I don't want to use. Uh, Outback? Outback Steakhouse? Uh, it's sweet. I like sweet stuff though, so maybe it will be up my alley. Please try the spaghetti, it's my childhood when you're not burnt out anymore. Okay, you know what? For you, Pattis, 100% I will. I have not even, do they still have Outback Steakhouse here in Toronto? I have not seen one of those in a long time. I watched uh, uh, The Flash, cause it's already out to rent. So I got it. Bro, I'm not gonna lie to you, I cried. Um, I didn't think I would like the movie. I also think the Nicolas Cage thing was the most ridiculous, stupid thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And I hope to, I hope to remove that image from my brain in the next few days. But um, not bad, pretty good movie. Uh, no, these are Giron Black Ink switches. Should I go buy a Duroc plate mount stabs or is that a waste? Do you need plate mount stabs for anything? Driest steak of my life? I mean, it's an older chain restaurant, right? I think I think it's sort of like Montana's and the rest of those like same category where it's like just they have like a very basic selection of like foods that just work. I don't know. I don't know why I left my light in the background, by the way. I watched Across the Spider-Verse. It was amazing. Yeah, I wanted to go... I did want to watch it last night, but then we ended up doing stuff later than I thought we were going to do. I haven't really been to the movie theaters in a while. My build has stock stabs and they're okay, but they're off with trying. Um, if, just make sure you need plate mounted stabs versus PCB mounted ones. But yeah, I mean, Duroc stabs are, I like them. Montana's is the only place I know of now in BC. All those old chain, like I hate saying this, but like those older chain restaurants like Montana's, Pickle Barrel, I feel like a lot of them have disappeared. Uh, update, Loom Keeps also has mystery switches. Oh, really? Oh, and they're also hand lubed, wow. The keg is still around. I don't mind the keg and like, I'm itching to go back one day and try it, but I'm also like, I don't go out of my way to think of the keg, you know what I mean? The restaurants I kind of like now, actually what, I like going to like, the only restaurants I would be like genuinely excited to go to, okay, it's a, I think it's considered, 
I think it's considered more of a, a JBBQ, not a KBBQ. But it's one in Toronto called Gubies. That one there I really like. It's like all you can eat, you know, KBBQ style uh, place. I love that. And I think the only other restaurants I'd be like 100% like super stoked to go to are seafood stuff. And that's like very like once in a blue moon too. Other than that, I don't know. They have nothing here that I care about. Everything else is like takeout, you know. Yakitori? I don't know if they have... I don't remember what what the, all the menu is at UB. It's been a while since I've been there. Gotta make sure all the switch bits... I still don't understand why the plate is split in half, but... That is so confusing to me. They have some good... They have some really good sushi places in downtown Toronto as well. Really good. It's a big flex cut. I suppose so, huh? <laughs> kind of is. I thought for some reason the plate was going to like just touch, but I, I'm kind of glad it doesn't. I could not figure out how to define the plate when I was making. Honestly, Tide, I opened it up because you would put in the build notes like it's a half plate, right? And I opened, I opened it up and I saw this thing and I'm like, oh, it's literally two halves of a plate. So I was, I was kind of laughing. I'm not going to lie. Like I, I, I was like, this is hilarious streams. And like, we're going to love this on the stream. And, uh, I've never, ever seen something like this before. <laughs> it's, it's so silly. Cause I thought something might've been missing from the box as well, Tide. I'm thinking about picking up Moondrop areas. Can't decide OG or snow. Get the snow. Areas are good though. I like them. Moondrop makes some pretty decent stuff for that price point. What's the reason? It beats me. I have no idea. Like I, I have literally absolutely no idea. Is that from a, is it from a Rolex? No, no. It's called the Time 80. It's such a pretty keyboard, actually. It's a, from what, 2020, 2019, something like that. It's a bit older. Oh. Oh, do we not have enough switches? Uh oh. <laughs> I didn't know there wasn't enough. Uh, I think I might have some more Gatorons. Uh oh. I was wondering about, I know, I wasn't even paying attention. I should have sent 90. Did some fall out of the box or something? Hold on one second. One second, I will check the box. Give me like five minutes, guys. I might have a batch of Gatoron inks already done. Like leftovers from another stream, like ages ago. I think I saw them today. But might be a bit of a long, long shoot to try to find where I put those. Um, I have my coffee and we're getting comfy. Oh, hell yeah, dude. We love coffee and we're getting comfy. Um, <clears throat> oh, no, those are a caps. No, my room's super clean now. I don't think I have any. So, 
So, what I might do... So we're missing, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Random mod switches? No, 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 we'll find some. Uh, hunting for switches? Yeah, I know, right? It's okay. We'll find something. We're going to make this work for our client. Uh, it would be cool, but I guess it would be more expensive than the keyboard already. Oh, wait, making the time work? If this actually worked and it was on the bottom, I think it would be completely redundant. It would be, re like, be super redundant if it was on the bottom and it was an actual function clock. But it would be super cool. I would love to see a version that worked just for funsies. Let me check my front. One second. Okay, I have inks, but I don't think any of them are lubed. I have a whole old section of switches that I have spares of, but I thought I had a separate bag for another client that had like 40 Gatoron inks because I had bought them for the client. Uh, give me like five more minutes, guys. Sorry about that. I guess not. That's all I got. I think we might have to loop some switches. Uh, you're doing a good thing for the client, it's okay. I'm so sorry about that, I could've sworn there were 90. Dude, I do this sometimes too, where I like, I know I order 90, and then maybe I put 10 in like a macro pad or something. Sometimes I also do that, so don't even feel bad. What happened to my Embody desk chair? That thing arrived broken. And while it was a fun chair to use for a little bit, I also didn't really love it. It creaked way too much. Like even the ones that weren't broken creaks, like they're just a, it's all plastic, right? So it just made a lot of noise. And I quite frankly did not care for it to make a lot of noise. The only thing is, I want to say some of these might already be lubed. Hey, let me double check. Let me double check. <clears throat> yeah, like I'm pretty sure some of these are actually already modded. Maybe it was just my, I got so unlucky with my own body. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, man. Visually, it's such a pretty chair and I really wanted it to work. Well, yeah, some of these are already lubed. I just need to film them. So how many do we need? 15, I said, guys. We're just double checking them all. 
14. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. I guess I already have looped some of these. Yeah, this one here is not lubed. Uh, is there a Discord DM good for the vid? Oh yeah, that'd be perfect, Crash. I'll take a look at it once I'm done streaming because I'm, I'm genuinely curious because I'm considering building one with KTT switch, or you said with uh, cap switches myself, so. No way I can watch Alex live again? What's up, Butter? How you doing, man? I enjoy the air on. My favorite chair so far that I've used is probably the steel case leap. That's definitely not lubed. Definitely not lubed. See, this one's definitely lubed. So nice. Keep if on you the were carry. missing switch, I would take the time to find you. Thank Glad you to so catch much, you on dude. A comfy Sunday, Alex. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. Thanks for being here. Keep off the carry. I love you, bro. This is definitely lubed as well. Perfect. <clears throat> We're just gonna get all these switches. I'm gonna go get some films and I'm gonna film them just so they match the rest of the switches. And then we'll, we'll get this board done for the client. That is definitely not lubed. This is definitely lubed. Um, actually, wait, I don't know what springs were in here. Were these stock springs? Oh, that's another thing I don't know about. Were these stock springs or were these aftermarket? I haven't actually, I don't recall what was in here. Okay, they're perfect, perfect, perfect. That's good. This should be lubed as well. Perfecto. What are your thoughts on the 910 Me? It's a nice, it's a nice keyboard. I mean, if I'm gonna be honest, I don't think I'd go out of my way to get one personally. Like I didn't when I built the few that I have on stream, I didn't love them that much, but they were okay. I'm so glad some of these are already lubed. Maybe this is where I put that extra batch that I had. I tend to try to keep all the same switches in like little jars. No, it's not weird. I like your tattoos. Thank you. I want to get more. I want a neck tattoo and I want my other arm done, but I don't think I don't think anyone I know is going to be happy about that. Leave that one there now. That's uh lightly lubed. I did build it. Uh I think I put the video on YouTube. Finally get to build my plateless arc 60 with clack bits. Hell yeah, dude. How do you like it? Hi, Alex. Dude, rock, what's going on, dude? What kind of tattoo do you want for the neck? I don't know. I just want artwork there. Like, I I just think visually they're so cool. And I, I, I've i kind of grown past the point where I need meaning for these tattoos, other than I just want stuff to look like visually. Like, I don't care. Like. Listen, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, all the tattoos on my arm, at one point, I convinced myself they had meaning and now I don't give a shit. Like, none of that meaning holds, like, I'm not gonna sit here and go, wow, like that, this means something to me. Like, I, I've grown past that. Like, I, they just look cool now and I just like the way they look and it's part of who I am. Lipstick mark for the neck tattoo, huh? What desk mat is that? Looks clean. It's from Grove Made. Um, I don't necessarily love this dust pad because it does slide around a lot. But it is still kind of nice. Hold on, I'm just gonna get one extra switch here. Just in case I need it for something. This one should be lubed. Yeah. That's how I feel about my tattoos now. I feel like everyone I know sort of feels the same way, but like when you're getting them originally, you're, you just kind of convince yourself that they have some sort of deeper meaning. <clears throat> Sorry. Deeper meaning. All right, all right, all right. Crisis averted. 
It's a soldering video still on the plate. It's um, it's gonna be an article first, but it is still technically something I'm slowly working on. Star Loss, I just realized I got gifted a sub. Yeah, we've had some very, very awesome people. I really appreciate all of you guys who do sub and who gift sub, and even just watching, man. I appreciate all of you guys. Love you guys. This is all I got left for deskies. I got a pack of white ones and that's it. All right, let's crack these open and get them films in and then we can finalize our keyboard. Oh, these were already lubed. I, I had like, I, I knew I had like a batch that I did myself. I just wasn't sure where I put them. Maybe, I, I still think there's more somewhere around here, like another 40 or something, but. Uh, I don't want to use this. It's actually yellow. Use this one here. Fuck it. Um, I found one felt desk pad from a local vendor sells. They put some rubber on the bottom, but some reviews actually said the, the way the rubber is shaped ruined their desk. Oh, really? Maybe it's just like a, a rubber that leaves stains. Like maybe it's dyed or something too. La Trash. We love you too, Alex. Love you. I appreciate you guys. You guys are too kind. Too, too kind to me. I don't know why, but you guys are awesome. Prey, thank you so much for the tier one, man. For 18 months? Come on, bro. Are there any builds that I should avoid on the 910 me? I'm gonna be honest, I think every 910 that I built was cherry switches. Every 910. Um, and I think one of them was a different switch that I can't remember the name of. I think it was a Franken switch. Uh, I don't think you should avoid anything. Just try what you like. The cherry switches, I think, were definitely my favorite out of the one, the two that I tried. But, uh, I mean, I don't know what would sound good in that. Gat inks, especially these older ones, do sound better when you put the films in. Just bouncing in to say thank you for your coverage of keyboards. Managed to uh, catch your Choice 65 bot and decide to pick one up. Smashing streams, smashing streamer. Hey, thank you, dude. That was a surprising board because of the price point. Like, uh, I think I put it in the little written part in the description. If that was priced any higher, I think that would have been a pass. But because it was priced so well, and honestly, it works for what it is. Like, great little pickup if you need a keyboard. But I appreciate that, man. It wasn't the normal kind of rubber. There were small spiky dots that left marks on the table. Ooh, that sounds awful. You gotta be careful with that stuff too. I haven't been really using desk pads a whole lot though. Once in a blue moon, I'll use them, but... Oh, come on, Alex. My hands are too shaky for this. Usually when I'm doing switches, I have to like chill out a little bit because my hands move around too much, but. We're gonna try our best today. So sorry if I seem like I am uh, shaking too much or focusing. That's just how my body works. I really enjoy your content because I feel like I can learn something about keeps and doesn't feel like you do clickbait content and that's why I appreciate it. Thank you, man. I try to make everything me. If that makes sense. Everything I try to do is just like, do I enjoy this? And do I think if someone vibes with how I enjoy something, maybe they'll enjoy it too. I don't, I refuse to do keyboard reviews in a YouTube sense. Everything for me needs to be live streamed. I used to do those reviews and every single time I did like straight, like edited content, you know, where I can, I have lots of time to sit and, sit and think and, and do all these things. I just personally think like it just left a bad taste in my mouth. I always felt like something felt very disingenuous about it. So I think doing things live 
where you get my honest reactions or, you know, my actual reactions, or you get to see frustrations that I'm having, um, or see when I make mistakes or see stuff that could happen makes more sense for expensive products. And it's why I also have such a hard time watching and digesting review content these days, because I like the approach of being live and getting to see people's reactions rather than a YouTube video of people talking about, cause like, okay, not to, not to talk badly. Okay. But I do find a lot of review streams or not review content. is just sort of reading the side of a box. Like it's telling you exactly what comes in your cereal, for example, and then saying whether they like it or not. And I don't really get a good sense of like use of the product. You know what I mean? I've learned so much from tuning in. We definitely appreciate it. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, dude. Um, I never feel like your content to be clickbait. I always feel like you're doing things for the people and not just because the money. Thank you for it. Oh, thank you guys. I appreciate that. You guys are going to make me emotional. Thank you guys. A lot of what I do too is client streams. I try to make sure that's the primary thing that we do. So I'm doing this for legitimate clients who want me to build their keyboards. And I, I try to take as much care, like even today, the client was short a bit switches. Hey, no problem. You know what I always try to do? Have backups of everything to make sure our clients always leave happy. Unless there's something I can't replace, but I always try to have extras. <clears throat> uh... I mean, it's okay to be shilly if you say it. I feel like, okay, my opinion on being shilly or whatever we want to call it, I feel like if you need to make your bread, you make your bread. You know, if you want to put food in the table, you put food in the table. But I feel like there needs to be balance, right? But I feel like as an audience member, right? Oh, should I close the curtains a little bit? Is it too bright in here? I feel like I'm glowing like a ghost now. Um, I feel like as an audience member myself, when I'm watching other people's content, if there's too much of content branding or like where I feel like I'm being sold products, I tend to lose interest as well. Like I tend to not care. Like this morning I was watching a review uh, or not a review, but someone's like vlog about how they were minimalizing their like space. Cause I was trying to do some storage research and it was like a three minute thing of them tying in a sponsorship to Skillshare. And like, I get it, but I also like don't want to sit here for three minutes watching an ad. So I lost interest in that video and I went to someone else's video. Like, it's cool when you do small tie ins, I feel, but like, I also just don't want to watch it. And I bet like, again, I, I understand why they're doing it because they need to make their money. Also, this hobby is the antithesis of instant gratification from GBs to looping to testing. It's about the journey. I also agree with that. It is a big journey factor as well. Install sponsor block? Is that an actual thing? No, I don't think, uh, I don't even use ad blocks anymore. Like if you wanna sell it, but you're open to it, uh, uh, but you're open about it and want a specific segment in the video, I don't mind it. But if the whole video feels like an ad, then I don't like it. A segment of shilling doesn't bother me if the creator uses chapters. Yeah, that's true too. I've never had any of those because the way I do my content doesn't need that. But uh, yeah, usually I just skip ahead too. I don't know. I like, like I said though, just to go back to it, I like using, or I like live content these days just because I feel better about watching it. Kill the mood, ads can be done well. Yeah, I feel like some ads are actually kind of funny and I'll stick around and I'll like watch it. And I'm not gonna lie, I've definitely like made some decisions based off of someone's like well done ad in their videos, but some of them are just too long. Hydrate, give me one sec. Actually, I should hydrate. My throat's killing me today and I don't know why. <clears throat> throat> 
In live content, you get to see the creator's real thought process. Yes, this is also why, I need to close the shades. It's way too bright in here now. It's hurting my eyes. I, that's why I also like live content. You get to see more of like a, a real reaction to things, which I appreciate. Um, during the video. Oh, that's kind of nice. Throat must be hurt, hurting from spitting all those facts about life. I just think I've been talking a lot the last like few days and I think it's definitely wearing on my throat. But usually it goes away in a day or two if I just like chill. All right, we did it guys. Client board saved. We found extra switches. We executed on making them good and mod it. And there we go. I am happy. Mm, Perfecto. I feel like I bent that one pin, but we'll find out here in a second. Uh, that feeling when you save a build. Yeah, this happens from time to time. I, honestly, I do it too. I've, I've literally done this prior to a stream where I've just miscounted it. Or just, it sometimes it just happens. Still waiting for my shipping info in, info on my Envoy. I did the pre-order during the month of May. It'll come soon. I think they're doing batches of them. Did you test the PCB? Already did. Actually, the reason why I figured out the other PCB didn't work is because I, I tested it prior to stream and I was like, oh shit, we're missing diodes on the back. And that's why I decided to not use that PCB. I've been doing that before stream just because like I feel like I like hearing the noises of the PCB tester and I know you guys don't so I just do it beforehand. Only sometimes do I forget and I do it on stream. Okay, Whew. I feel good about this. I actually feel really good that we saved this. I thought maybe I would have to call stream and figure out where my inks were. What are some good heavy keycaps? Oh, I think the heaviest keycaps, I've not used the ceramic, so I'm not too sure about how heavy they are. If you want heavy keycaps, um, CRP are pretty weighty to me. I feel like they have like a nice heft. And then past that, I'm not too sure. I don't really use a lot of other keycaps. Right, let me just make sure all the pins are good. Are cannon caps pretty heavy? I can't remember. Yeah, you know what? You might be right. They might be a little heavier than normal too. All right, we look good. I think all the pins are seated nicely. I guess we'll find out as I solder. Um, again, one quick thing that I think is super important when you guys are assembling your PCB and plate and stuff, please, please, please make sure that everything's pushed in nicely. If you leave gaps, um, underneath things, what happens is sometimes the sound of the keyboard can just drastically change. So just make sure that when you guys do that, everything's seated in the same level, okay? And let's warm up uh, our soldering iron. I have the Seriki ceramic caps, easily two times heavy. Are they nice? Like, do they actually have a nice sound profile? Like, would you recommend them personally, Lost? I've been seeing some people on social media get them and they look cool as fuck. Hope I don't knock down my water. <laughs> and let's get our fan. Oh, are they heavy and they thock? Do they thock? I mean, hi Chaser, how you doing, man? I've heard that you need to uh, swap springs on a few keys. Oh, are they that heavy? Wait, that's kind of cool, actually. I didn't realize they were that heavy, though. That's interesting. All right, time to solder things in.
<clears throat> you do have to modify the space bar switch. Oh, like how heavy of a spring do you guys need for the ceramic keycaps though? Agent Purple, hi. thank you so much for the tier one, man. Really appreciate you. And hi, how are you doing? I hope life's going well for you, my friend. Also, I am Lynx. Appreciate your tier one as well, dude. How are you guys doing today? Hope everyone's doing well. Eat pancakes? Are they chocolate chip? Are they chocolate chip and cinnamon? That's my favorite flavor pancake. Oh god, I don't want. I, you know what? I'm very skeptical. Skeptical. Ugh. I don't even want to talk about pancakes because then we talk about pancakes versus waffles, and it never goes anywhere. It, it ends up being a conversation we should never use. Maybe you should consider wearing a mask while soldering, just for the good of your health. I have the the fan. We're good. As long as you're soldering right next to it. <clears throat> I think my space bar is high 60, low 70s for linears. How interesting. So you do need it to be pretty uh, pretty heavy, huh? Um, doing great. I've been bending your videos for the past week and you're getting me back into building caves. Let's go, dude. It's a fun process, especially if you have a fun like community to kind of chit chat while you do with it. It's awesome. Uh, waffles. Oh, God. What IMs am I using? I am using Campfire Andromedas. <laughs> Does it leave bad smells during the soldering? Uh, because of the fan, I don't smell anything. Like because of the solder, the fume extractor. I literally smell nothing at all. Nothing at all. And I just replaced the carbon filter too. There were odd times where, like, I just need to solder in one single switch. And, yeah, you can smell it, but very rare. I, I don't like not using the fan. I have a Mila air purifier, even with the soldering fan running, the thing goes wild with warnings when I solder. Oh, really? <laughs> Hold breath and heavy exhale just for a single switch. Exactly, dude. Uh, Lead-free is so much harder to solder the same things. EU doesn't allow us to buy lead at solder anymore, so I have I haven't had an easy time with it anymore. Oh, really? The EU banned it? That's crazy. Not me soldering in jumper cables and telephone exchanges with no fans or ventilation multiple times a day. I know there are a lot of trades that actually do a lot of soldering with no ventilation, period. That is crazy to me. Uh, how do you lube KTT switches? You, do, you can't even... So with KTT switches, you are unable to even film those things. They are so tight of a tolerance for the housing. Um, I just do a light coat of lube. You don't need anything crazy for that. Only companies can buy lead at solders. Noble citizens can't without a proper permit. I need a permit for it? Damn. That's pretty crazy. I think I'm just gonna buy tons of sample switches from Serpent Keys. I have never heard of Serpent Keys. Yeah, you also need a permit here to go fishing too. I think it's uh, after the age of 16 or something, you need to get a fishing license. And then you need to renew that pretty often actually. I wanna take my dad fishing though. We haven't been in a long time. I got the site from your site. 
<sighs> so the reason I probably haven't heard of it, there's um, a person who used to give me all their data from the UK stuff. Uh, so Serpent Keys is probably there from them. But uh, I don't really follow too many of the EU vendors, to be honest. I don't really know many of them. There's no reason for me to shop from them, unless it's a very specific item. But uh, do let me know if there's any, I guess, oddities with Serpent Keys or anyone else from the UK or EU. Because, uh, yeah, it's too hard for me to, like, track those. Do you have any budget board recommendations for 100 to 150? Oh, dude, if you want something nice right now, let's get the Cycle 7. Or even the Choice 65 is not a bad little pickup, too. <clears throat> I'm actually waiting for the, uh, in for the GB for the QK100. Taco and Cycle 7, what do you think about it? If you were to pick between the Taco and the Cycle 7, I would pick the Cycle 7. The Taco's okay. It's nothing crazy out of this world special. At least I th don't think it is. It's deceiving. I thought that wasn't pressed in the way. Serpent keys are legit. That's good to hear then. As long as you guys are having a good experience, then I am happy. That is all that matters. They call me Tandoori. Thank you so much for the tier one for two months. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you. Just dropped all my switch or my brushes. Oh, well. let me pick them up. Neo 65 review, I think soon. Um, I think that's arriving in the next week or something. I don't know when I'm gonna be reviewing that. I need to talk to them about dates. Should be an interesting little board. Another good little budget contender. Uh, which by the way, Quantum 60 will be fulfilled by the designer from London. Yes. Which means I'll have to pay lots of duties if I order that board. Lots and lots of good old duties. Aha, there is a switch in it. I knew there was one. Man, I, I love and hate keyboards for that. Because a lot of it's all over the world. Not a lot of it's in Canada. And then I get hit with duties and I just feel bad, man. I just feel bad. Trying to decide between the Neo TKL FRL and Cycle 7 at the moment. The Neo TKL FRL. Which one's that one? Neo TKL FRL? I, I don't think I've heard of that one there. Cycle 7 is pretty hard to beat value-wise, though. You get a lot in that box. The duties are rough for me in Finland. I have to pay around 60 uh, euro extra for the Pluto. Uh, really ramped up the price. Yep, dude, everything for me too, unless I get it from a Canadian, even, even if it's coming from the US. Crazy expensive sometimes. Like, okay, recently I've been looking and I want a little, it's, an, it's purely aesthetic, but I wanted something for my desk. And I was like, man, I really don't want to order this because it's coming from the States and I know I'm gonna have to pay lots of duties on this. So I ended up just not ordering it. But yeah, I've made a lot of calls to not order stuff just cause like, 
I don't know, man. It doesn't really make sense for me. The duties on F1 were rough. Yeah, I can imagine. Sometimes it's like a few hundred dollars. Sometimes it's $50, $60. It's crazy. Again, just as a cautionary tale to everyone here too. These things add up. Keyboards can get expensive. My recommendation for you guys, if you guys are getting into this hobby, spend wisely. And I know we like to joke around about the three times rule and, you know, ha ha ha. I'm being dead serious though. I don't want to see you guys like go broke over these things. They're just keyboards at the end of the day. So just budget, budget accordingly. Especially in today's economy, it is not fun to deal with that kind of stuff. Why does the PCB soldered has two holes for the right pin? Oh, for Alps. Alps lay, uh, for Alps switches. Not a lot of the newer PCBs have support for that. <clears throat> but they look so good. I know, I know. Thank you, Dean. Appreciate the raid, bro. I hope you're having a good day today, man. What were you guys up to? Uh, which of the following linear switches would you recommend? Oil King, Aqua King, Morandi? Okay, the question is, do you want to lube switches? If you don't want to lube switches, just get the Morandi switches. Other than that, I think out of all those switches, my favorite are probably the Oil King, but you have to re-lube them. Stock Oil King is kind of overrated, in my opinion. I don't think they're that great. Uh, luckily, when I buy these things, I only use the keyboard for years. I'm not trying to something that doesn't make the hobby. Yeah, I mean, but it's kind of boring to not uh, not getting new things every now and then. I totally get that, dude. Totally understand the want for something new too, because like, it's fun. Like, it is genuinely exciting to open up packages. But it's also not exciting to be broke and have it be because of the hobby that you were interested in. You know what I'm saying? That is a not fun part about that. Speaking of expensive but looks good, Work just revealed their new board. Interesting. It's on Instagram? I'll take a look afterwards. Just trying to get through the last few of these switches here. It's on Insta? Okay, okay. Uh, play keyboards, do not let keyboards play you. True. Actually, a good saying, dude. Have fun with the keyboards and don't let the keyboards have fun with you. I like that. The pin is not 100% straight, so I'm going to make sure it's straight. And then pop it back in. Uh, there is a con conundrum though, what people describe as budget options are middle range. Um, I also really hate, I try not to, dude, that's even why with like the choice 65 and like a lot of keyboards, like sure, sometimes I, I say it on stream like budget, whatever, but I try to not use the word budget when, when, um, doing any written content because budget is so unfair to say, man, like to whose budget are we talking about? First of all. And second of all, if you really want to talk about budget keyboards, like, just go buy one from Microsoft or Dell. Like, those are actual budget boards. We're talking about what I like to call, like, more entry level or just, like, introductory to a hobby type thing. Like, 
stuff that's more priced um, for uh, for accessibility rather than you know luxury, but still allows you to be in a hobby. So that's why budget's kind of a weird word for me. I don't know. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but that's how I feel about it. All right. This is done. Everything's good. True, I was telling my friend that 100, 200 is like budget board for me and they're like, I can go to Target and buy a loot. Yeah, yeah. I That is exactly like when, when, I've had so many conversations with people about budget, right? About budget for keyboards, stuff like that. But when we're talking about budget, truly budget to me means like five or $10 keyboards. Stuff that I can go buy off Amazon for next to nothing at all. Um, that's what I think budget should mean. And that's what the, the meaning holds to me to a certain degree. But everyone's gonna be a little different, right? Everyone's gonna be a bit different there. One sec guys, I need to go blow my nose and wash my hands. One sec. Wait, this is kind of aesthetic with everything sitting on my on my desk. Whoa, it's kind of nice. All right. I was expecting to hear some comedy elephant noises. <laughs> I don't blow my nose like that, guys. <laughs> my my dad does though. I feel like every dad does. That's like a only when you have a child do you get to blow your nose blow your nose like that. That that's a thing. That's a thing for later. Let's put this all together now. <laughs> Dad superpowers? Yeah. Agree. And I need a hex bit. I'm 21 and pull my nose like that. Hey, you know what? Do you. I'm not judging anyone. I just don't blow my nose like that. Did you build the derivative R1 better? Wait, did you like, sorry, the derivative R1 better or the salvation for more thocky build? Um, I personally, wait, is there washers in this? Oh, there is, interesting. Um, I personally don't think you're gonna get thocky out of any one of those keyboards. 
But I think if you're looking for something deeper sounding, then yes, I do think the better board would be the derivative for a deeper sounding experience. It's definitely going to be a bit deeper sounding. Interesting. I don't know why there's washers in here. Here, This view is kind of cool for this board. I'm a bit sad. There was a really nice plateless only board I was excited about, but the GB had canceled early. A lot of boards have not been hitting MOQ these days. Um, for lots of variety of reasons. Mostly, I would say, economic reasons. Economy has not been that good, therefore people don't have a lot of extra money uh, to use and spend. So, it, it makes sense. What color mods? Oh, I don't know the exact colors, just like a, if you want to look at the mouse, it's like this, but it was painted by a guy named Leonardo de Mouse. The market is cooling quite a bit, hence the all in stock GMK stuff and um, proliferations of the less expensive bare bones. Yeah, you'll see that the market might get a little bit better, but for right now, People are still very interested at finding keyboards. Just, I've talked to a lot of people about this, even a lot of clients, like people just don't have the money. And that, that's totally okay. Like, I would not feel bad about that. Oh, these come off. Interesting. So these are separate pieces. And this just opens up like this. Interesting. Very, very interesting. So let's move. Should I tighten these up a bit? Cause you can kind of kind of hear that. Okay, I'll tighten this up here in a second. Hope that doesn't cause rattling in the keyboard. Different bit. The market will also be facing some saturation as well. Yeah, there's that too for sure. I don't know. Just be financially responsible, guys. Live, what is it called? Live within your means? That's like a good way to put it, I think. Live within your means. F1 sold out in like three minutes. I say the market's just fine. Okay, I know, okay. The popular boards, like the super popular ones, still make sense. Like, I get it. But if you're, if we're gonna look at the hobby, and I've talked to tons of vendors about this too, even for GMK stuff, uh, for a lot of things, p things would sell out even if it wasn't popular within no time at all prior to, I'd say, the economy not doing so great. And because there was more people who would just had a bit more disposable income that would just like, like to try different things out. That's not really the case now, though. It's a little different. What is the deepest sounding switch? That's a tough one to answer because I, I think there are a lot of deep sounding switches, but I don't know what the deepest is. Man, these screws are really short for this. Did you decide on a keyboard or key set for this board? I want to use Dandy. I think I'm going to stick to using Dandy today. I don't really have anything that would work super well in this. I wish I had um, Civilization, but I don't. So I'm just going to stick to, uh, to Dandy tonight. I don't know what the owner plans on putting on this board. This is a very cool board though. I mean, Redacted probably would look really nice on this. Uh, I think it's the combination of people in this in uh, in this habit of no longer wanting to try stuff with the risk of not being able to get rid of the uh, influx of new designers. And yeah, I don't disagree. I'm, it might be a, also a thing of people not liking the resale market for things too. I get that to a certain degree. 
I need some help with my build. I was desoldering my keyboard and the solder pad of my spacebar popped out. How do I fix it? If the pad, the contact pad fell out, you're gonna need to hand wire it. Um, there's some other fixes you could do, but you're most likely need to hand wire it to something. I am not the best in that. That is usually something I do off stream and I usually talk to like a designer or a PCB designer about that kind of stuff. Actually, that's as tight as we're gonna get it. Um, but I would definitely maybe ask in like a Discord for some assistance there. Cool. Very, very, very cool. So this just goes back on like this. Flip this guy over. And then put these guys back on. Cool. Damn, the weight looks so good. It's a very interesting looking weight. Like, that's for sure. Lick it? Listen here. That is not a today thing, dude. That is not a today thing. Absolute scenic light, le light leaks on the desk, 10 out of 10. Hey, yo. Here, I don't really have a good way. I should technically put the camera on my left side, but then you guys will see it in the, in the frame, so. Because I am right-handed, so it doesn't make sense to have it here. But oh well. I did tighten the weight. There's nothing to tighten. It, it's already a little bit, uh, I guess the parts on the inside move ever so slightly, so. Not really much to tighten there. Give it the mustache kiss, huh? Oh, what is that? I'm not aware of that one. What the? Are single boards worth their aftermarket prices in your opinion? Ooh, I have a, a very, very opinionated opinion on aftermarket. I personally don't think anything's worth aftermarket. I live by, uh, I guess what you guys called JOMO, which is the joy of missing out. Um, if I miss out on something, I miss out on something. What am I supposed to say? Um, I, I've gone down that route of wanting to buy things, of spending a lot of money. Actually, the key cult I gave away during our last Subathon is the only board I spent a lot of money on aftermarket for and I regret it because it was like it brought me joy, but I Should not spent that much money on it um, So in my opinion if you can learn to enjoy missing out on things you'll probably enjoy the hobby a bit more um, This is really pretty by the way, this is so cool so if you really want a unicorn though, and you're willing to spend the money it is on aftermarket, then I don't think a single soul here can convince you otherwise. If that's something that your heart desires, you shouldn't listen to anyone here. If you have the money to do so and you're financially okay, do you. But if you want my opinion on it and maybe everyone else's, I'm not sure if anyone else wants to, to chime in, I don't think aftermarket prices are for me. I, I don't look at aftermarket anymore, I don't care for it. Unless I need some sort of specialty piece for something, I could care less. It is not something that brings me joy in this hobby, um, so I don't bother with it at all. How much are the unicorns aftermarket? I'm assuming probably like what, one or $2,000? Yeah, something like that. Cool, oh, yeah, it's a pretty bored actually. How does this little light work? Let me find out. Oh, that's kind of cute. I like TKLs with right aligned USBs, by the way. It's like my thing. Board has no feet. It, it does. It has feet. Oprah's thong. Thank you very much for the for prime. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you. Box here. 
Let's put on our keycaps. Actually, let's also grab our GS3 to kind of tune up our stabs ever so slightly. I'm gonna need more GS3 though. Did you watch Oppenheimer or Barbie? No, I want to though. I really, really want to. Uh, time to sell my kidney, buy boards, flip it, buy new kidney. I don't think it works that way. <laughs> uh, Stream Sheep, thank you so much for the Prime, man. I hope you're having a good day today, dude. Thanks for being here, bro. Oprah's thong. What's going on, dude? Great name. C3 stabs are a little bit lube hungry. So I'm gonna really have to make sure I put enough by putting little bits by little bits in and see where we like it. So this might take some time to tune, but I could get it right away. I think I know how much lube to put in here. Alrighty. Now this should have a very traditional top mount sound like super traditional top mount because this is a aluminum plate top mount. So I am not expecting anything like vibrant sounding like the Suse because we're using a plastic plate. I'm expecting a little bit more harsh of a sound. But let's put everything on before we judge because that is the most important thing about building the boards. Jay goes here, I think. Um, space bar sound, uh, yeah. So the space bar might be a little bit stiff sounding. We might have to go in and change some stuff up for the space bar. Uh, I need to go find where my, my O-rings are because I would like to burger mount the space bar. Actually, I have an idea for this board to make it sound so Super good, but I just need to go find where all my little O-rings are. This is uh, dandy, yeah. Is it pause up here? I don't remember. It's okay. Dandy is such a good set. I love it. Uh, there's a, a green dandy, and then also a dandy with that's kind of reverse. Do I use accent? No, I don't use accent here. No accent. Um, so what I was thinking of doing, just so you guys are aware, again, I have to go find where my O-rings are. I don't even know how many I have left. Perhaps I don't have enough, but I was thinking about burger mounting this and then not doing anything to the space bar and seeing if that can help. But because this isn't too terribly hard to take apart and whatnot, I want to do a few things because I can already tell I do not like the mounting point on the space bar. I'm glad a lot of uh, designers are getting away from that though, you know? Uh, Dane, if I was a designer, I would never want to get away from you. I hope you're having a good day, buddy. Love you, bro. And I hope uh, hope the rest of the week's gonna go absolutely amazing for you, bro. <sighs> Sorry I'm late, running a bit of errands. Hey, dude, what's going on, Slurpless? You're all good, bro. The alphas sound very good though. The bottom, I can tell, has a bit of a shake to it. I'm wondering if that's because... That's a stab thing. Okay, I'll have to experiment with the bottom. The alphas sound great for me. No, that's not rattle. That's not stab rattle. That is literally, uh, I think that's the case giving a rattle. But we're going to try a few different things. I mean, it could be stab rattle. Who fucking knows? But we're going to try a few different things for that. Uh, delete. Again, this is an older board. It is a few years old. 
It doesn't follow all the more modern trends, but it is a classic top mount. So it should be pretty easy to go in and like change a few things if need be. We'll see though, we'll see. Let's put it all together before we judge things. The gold front's a nice touch. I agree with that. It's a nice little touch to the build here. Oh. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna go in and... I don't know, it's like the plate's so weird. Change things up a bit. Morgan Freeman deepness. What the? Never heard it like that before. Yeah, the alpha sounds solid. It's the edges of the board. And I'm wondering, you know what I think it might be too? Those screws didn't feel that great to me. The screws for the top mount. I'm gonna see if I have any longer screws available too. I might not do all this on stream because I need to go find things and I don't want to like sit here and find things and make you guys like wait for minutes at a time to go find things to try things. It could also be the, the screws for the top mount weren't long enough. Uh, MKC7, I have not heard of that from my keyboard. I'm gonna have to open this up one more time. I'll do that on stream with you guys though. I wanna just make sure everything's screwed in 100%. Oh, I put the S in the wrong spot. We don't mind? Really? It's a cute board though. It's looking good so far. This is a felt dust pad, yeah. See, as we put more things in, the, the sound starts to change. Ooh, it actually sounds pretty good. It does. I am already happy with the way this sounds. We just need to do some small tune-ups and then figure out what's causing the whole bottom row to kind of rattle a little bit. That's gonna be my next little task. Do you think there'll be a time when non-GMK sets reach GMK quality without the price tag? Um, I think personally, Key Kobo does a really good job. In fact, my Key Kobo stuff, sure it's not like, I think there might be some pieces that I sort of prefer on the GMK thing, but sound wise, Key Kobo is pretty much already there. Like I think Key Kobo sounds almost nearly, and maybe it's just that I can't discern it myself, but I would say it's identi almost identical. So that is my opinion. So I think it's already done. And it doesn't cost as much. And you can find sets for what, about a hundred bucks, something like that. Okay, some of the rattling is gone now that we put keycaps on. So that might've just been a keycap thing and the way the sound was resonating there. But I can still hear some of it. So I am gonna finalize it. If it's still there and I don't like it, open it up and just see if it needs to be tightened up a little bit. That or find a different screw for the bottom because it seems like even the screws are a bit short. GMK has QC issues. Um, I'm hoping they get whatever happened sorted out. I genuinely still think GMK is like very nice quality. But again, I like my Kikobo stuff. Oh no, where's my F12? Is that it? Fuck. I don't know where my F, I don't even know where my A is. Oh my God, what 
This has always happened to me. Ooh, I did not like that. Yeah, the screws are not long enough, guys. I think the screw literally just came out. Let's see. The screw literally just, I had a feeling, dude. I had a feeling the screws were not long enough. Let me open this up and find out. I wonder though, do I have any extra screws? I'm sure I have something that works. Bit, bit, bit. Okay, I'll find the other few keycaps afterwards. We're gonna take care of this first. Am I from Alberta? I am not from Alberta, no. I am from Toronto. There's gonna probably be like two or three screws that have just fallen out completely. Watch. You give off Alberta vibes? What's an Alberta vibe? Are GMK clones ethical? I really don't know how to answer that. I personally, ah oh man, fuck, I don't know how to answer that. I, I, I really don't. I want to, but I don't know how. Oh yeah, look, the screws have all fallen out in the middle. How many, two? What the fuck? There's, they're so short. This is holding up the top plate. This tiny little fucking screw. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go find some other screws for this. I had a feeling, dude. I told you, I was like, man, I think these are too short. I had a feeling. Big bag of screws at one point. Yeah. Let's use these. That average? Okay, guys. I think Oak gave me these actually. <laughs> They're average. All right, guys. I wasn't talking about that. You know what I'm saying? That wasn't the convo we were having. Okay, I hope these work. Let's see. These work? Nope. Fuck. These are for stabilizers, I believe. Let me see what else I have in my arsenal of screws. The screws just tickling the plate don't didn't fit for me. Yeah. It's okay. Let's see what else I got. Salvin will work. Maybe. I'm not sure. No, they're not gonna. These are wider. God damn. Oh, uh, the keyboard asked. What happened? What did the keyboard ask for? Do I have any wires? How many I do? Let's just try to get these back in. Time 80 brought back memories with that screws. Oh, you also had problems with them? They're too small. Okay. We'll just try to get them in and I'm gonna have to not crank down hard, but just go like an extra stop or two on them.
Wait, I'm missing one more spell. There it is. Um, I am set. Just cracked open a nice fresh cider on a nice Sunday with an owl extreme. Could not have asked for better. Thanks, man. I appreciate you. I normally do not like tightening things this much, but yikes. Feels like we need to. What screwdriver is that? That's from, um... Okay, that fixed some of the rattling, though. Okay, let's screw it all nicely together now. Which means the O-rings won't work. So that ID I had with the O-ring, because these are so short, will not work. And they're not using the standard screws that you would find in a top mount. It won't work, unfortunately. A little smudge about that, but it's okay. Um, put this back on. Yeah, it's a very pretty back piece. Extremely pretty. It's always a blast doing like these really, not older boards, but it's always it's always fun doing them. Always a bit fun doing them. Come here, you stupid washer. Uh, how much did the client pay for this? Did you buy this, uh, Ty, did you buy this, like, direct from Fox Labs? Like, when it was in GB? Oh, no, you, you said you bought this aftermarket, right? My bad. You said you bought this aftermarket. I went to this one meetup where a dude bought his unbuilt time and he just to show the back piece. It makes sense because it is a very cool back piece. It does make sense. I would also probably show this thing off just for the back piece. There might be meetups in the UK. Check out uh, local discords. They'll post things there. I think we have another Toronto meetup happening in November now. So that should be pretty fun. All right. Yes, that did fix the, uh, the weird rattling issue. Okay, let us get the last few caps now. F12. I need caps lock as well. It's not this guy. This guy. And then I need to find A. Can you set the time in the clock? I'm assuming you can, because you can move it around. I'm assuming, but I'm not sure. Dude. I don't even, I, I sometimes it just goes off. I'm not even doing anything. Pardon? <laughs> You know what? The alphas sound pretty nice on this thing. For a good choice. Little RGB happening over there. This looks nice. What do you guys think? It's a classy looking board. Very, 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 very basic side profile. Really cool bottom with that uh, the time thing. Hmm. Okay, so stabs have been tuned to my usual liking. Let's just see what this thing actually sounds like now. We're using GAT inks, we're using an aluminum plate. Let's see. A little HJ test for you guys. That's actually really nice. Classic top mount. Little DN test. Arrows are okay on this. Not the best arrows I've ever heard, but 
classic, very classic top note. We'll tune up the stab a little bit more. Okay, you know what, honestly, this is really nice. This is kind of up my alley sound-wise though. So, I don't know, I think this is pretty damn nice sounding. This is what I would normally like, like on something I'm typing on. I mean, the top, okay, the space bar on aluminum top mount always sounds like this especially because they put a mounting point, I believe, right here. So when it's sitting right there, it ends up having a more metallic-y sound signature. It's not hollow, it's metallic-y, but aluminum top mount, even if you don't have that, that over there, kinda always feels like this and sounds like this, especially. No avoiding that unless you get rid of the, the mounting point. For what this is, and again, for the, I'm not gonna blame it on its age, but it's uh, still very classic sounding. Ooh, what, am I, what am I typing on here? How are you supposed to press Windows key? You don't. <laughs> Unfortunately, you don't L7. Uh, the alphas sound really nice. Yeah, like the alphas are genuinely beautiful. I still don't mind the space bar on this though. The space bar is nice. I really don't mind it. I don't think it's overbearing. What is your blue board? This is the Suse. How do you manage to get all boards clacking? I don't know. Um, I, I personally believe if you, I, I don't know. I actually don't have an answer for you. That's just how I build keyboards, I guess. Um, one important factor that I keep telling people to, and I, do, I say this almost every single time I build keyboards, when you're putting in your switches, make sure they're all put flush. That's it. Like, I think that's really the only thing that I can like religiously say that I do on every single board. I didn't lube these, so this is not like, I only lube 14 of them. Um, just make sure you guys put things in. Take your time, like when you're assembling keyboards, that's it. So this is what polycarbonate would sound. I'm sure if the time 80 had polycarbonate mount, uh, top mount, this is how it could sound. The aluminum is a little bit more in your face, but this is very, again, traditional aluminum top mount sound. I have an aluminum board, like a, or sorry, an aluminum top mount that sounds exactly like this. Very classic sounding though. I have no problems, no quarrels with this board. I think again, top mount is a very safe choice to go with. Um, if you want something a bit louder, I do find it's more like, Tried and true, even past gasket mounts, to be honest. No, there's no flex at all with this. I don't I don't even understand why they made the plate have two separate pieces. That makes no sense to me. I still don't get it. Uh, it didn't really add that much of difficulty to install things, though. Looks nice, though. Time 80. Beautiful looking keyboard. Oh, I just dropped my cable. I keep doing that now. I used to have a clip on my cable that I put on the bottom of the desk and I took it out. Beautiful, beautiful looking keyboard though, huh? Very, very pretty. Gotta admit. Well, 
I'm gonna go retrue my cable, I guess. My GF would kill me if I bought such a board. With the time, the time? Or the, the Suse? I'll just use this cable. All right, though, guys, that's pretty much the stream. Ran a little longer than normal. Uh, we had a few, like, not hiccups per se, but things that kind of almost give us roadblocks, but we didn't. Um, I hope uh, Tide ended up enjoying the sound of the board. Let me know if you want anything else changed. I'm kind of glad we didn't go with silicone. This would have been very muted. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Appreciate you guys as always. I don't know who we're going to raid. Yeah, this would make a sick display piece. Uh, let's go raid. Oh, Marshmallows is building a bias. You wanna go watch Marshmallows build a bias? Oh, this particular one is not plugged in either. God damn it. Hold on. Come here, my cable. You're coming this way now. All right, guys. Take care, everybody. I appreciate you guys as always. Uh, Tide, we'll talk about getting this board back. I'll send you an email probably tomorrow morning uh, or even later on. I'm going to do some last minute tune ups like through the stabs to make sure everything's 100%. Thank you guys for tuning in. Appreciate you guys. I will talk to you all tomorrow. We're doing another board then. If I have some time tomorrow, I don't know. I forget what I'm building. I really want to build the June. So we'll see if we have time for that too. Um, everyone have a good week if I don't talk to you though. Love you guys and bye everyone. See ya.